King Pratapa saw these personalities. He said, who are they? They look so happy and they look so full of light. And Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, this is the special feature of what Lord Chaitanya has come to give the world. It is called Prem Sankirtan. So there's beautiful stories about how the Lord met all the devotees and gave each one of them garlands and embraced them and put sandalwood pulp on them and arranged personal residences. He was praising each devotee and each devotee was so humbled. The Lord would say to Vasudev Dutt that even though I was intimate friends with your brother Mukunda, I feel even more close to you. And Vasudev said, actually, you knew my brother first, so therefore he's senior to me. <laughs> They're being exalted in a higher position by the Lord, but they themselves are always putting themselves in a lower position than all the other devotees. This is Vaishnav competition. It's quite inconceivable. And Lord Chaitanya said, where's Haridas Thakur? And they said, he's down the road offering his obeisances in the dust. And Lord Chaitanya said, go bring him. Someone ran out to Haridas Thakur, Lord Chaitanya wants you to come. He said, I'm not qualified to come. Well, I'm an abominable person. And he went through so much arrangements. He told Kashi Mishra, I want a little place right in the garden near the Jagannath temple. He said, yes, yes, I will arrange. And then Lord Chaitanya went out to where Haridas was. And Haridas was laying down in obeisance and Lord Chaitanya picked him up and embraced him. And the dialogue between them was so sweet. Lord Chaitanya gave Haridas a little cottage in a garden just next to the temple. He said, you chant here and you look at the chakra on the top of the temple and you will see Jagannath there. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, soon after, he called Kashi Mishra Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and the superintendent of Jagannath temple and said, the Jagannath is soon going to do the Ratiyacha Kuntu Gundicha. That's the destination where he will stay about a week. He said, I want to clean the temple with my devotees. Please arrange whatever is required to clean the temple. Kashi Misha said, it's not really befitting you to clean, but whatever you wish we will do. So the next morning, Lord Chaitanya had over 100 brooms. Now please hear this carefully. He personally, to each devotee, with his own loving, divine hands, gave them a broom <laughs> and instructed them how to sweep. He said, in this temple, Gundicha, the Supreme Personality of God is going to come. It must be completely clean. Every grain of sand, every piece of straw, and every particle of dust must be cleaned. And they swept and they swept and they swept and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was sweeping. And as he was sweeping, he was weeping, he was crying in ecstasy, sweeping the temple of the Lord. And they swept the ceilings and the walls and every room and the courtyards and every adjacent building to the temple. And they swept and they swept and they swept. And Lord Chaitanya with his own cloth would pick up piles of what he collected of the, and, and put it outside. And all the dust, sand, and straw of all the other devotees was in one pile and Lord Chaitanya's was in his own separate pile. And it was far bigger than all the hundreds of devotees. He was teaching by his example. And after they cleaned the whole temple, he said, now let us clean again with our brooms and search for finer particles of sand, straw, and dust. And they cleaned again until it was totally immaculate. And then there were hundreds of pots that were filled with water. And these hundreds of pots, the devotees were just standing, waiting for the word of Lord Chaitanya. And when he gave the word, they started pouring the water on the ceilings, on the walls on the altars, on the floors, on the kitchens, on the courtyards, everywhere. They were just washing and washing and they were going back and forth with the pots. There was lines of devotees from Indrajumana Srovar passing the pot from one to another to another and finally got to the temple and somebody poured it and they poured, took the empty pot and gave it to one devotee, gave it to another, 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 all the way to Indrajumana Srovar, which 
It's about a half a kilometer away. Something like that. And because they were all cooperating. They were all the servant of the servant of the servant. And then to get more water, they were going into wells, they were going to other little ponds. Anywhere there was water, they were collecting water and bringing it. And they washed and washed and washed. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with his own cloth, he was shining in different places. And one Bengali devotee poured the water on Lord Chaitanya's feet and drank it. Lord Chaitanya was externally angry, but internally he was mysteriously happy. And he told Swarup Damara, who is this Bengali devotee who has made this, caused me to make this offense? Washing my feet and drinking that water in the temple of the Supreme Lord? So Swarup Damara made him leave. So he's actually, he's happy with you, but he's trying to show an example. And they cleaned and they cleaned and they shined it until the temple was absolutely pure. Then they went to Narsingha's temple close by and did the same thing there. And after cleaning everything, hour after hour after hour, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, during the whole cleaning, the only thing anybody said was Krishna, Krishna. If you wanted a broom, if you wanted more water, if you needed anything, you would say Krishna, Krishna. And because they were so totally united in Krishna's names, in Krishna's seva, in serving together, they could completely understand everything the other person wanted just by hearing him say Krishna Krishna. Everything was communicated. When the temple was cleaned, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had the murdangas and the kartals playing. They started to sing and Lord Chaitanya was dancing. And the kirtan went to another level of tumultuous ecstatic expression of prema bhakti. In this way there was the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur gives an elaborate explanation that this is an instruction that if we want to see Krishna in our hearts, we must make our hearts pure. Because the reality is, Krishna is within the heart of every living being. That means our, our heart is Krishna's temple. It should be a pleasing place for Krishna to reside should be clean. For a devotee, the heart and the mind become one. And within the temple of the mind, the heart, we should be worshiping Krishna with our every word, with our every act, with our every thought. And to do that, we have to have a very clean heart. And we clean the heart through hearing about Krishna. Jaito Dharapana Marajana. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was taught this chanting of the holy names and glories of the Lord. It cleans the heart. So by hearing and chanting, we clean the heart from the sand and the dust and the straw in the form of kutinati, the tendency to find faults with others. That's the dirt in our heart. By hearing, by chanting God's names and glories, we can clean jeto darpana marachana, all the dust. And as the heart becomes clean, anandam buddhi bharatanam, then we begin to taste real happiness. And we're very careful not to let any of that dirt back in. That's why Lord Chaitanya cleaned all around the temple and all the courtyards around the temple, so that nothing, after they cleaned it, nothing could get in. And that's the purpose of our regulative principles. We're cleaning and we're protecting. And that cleaning is not just by our own effort. It's by Krishna's grace. If we're sincere in our efforts to follow the principles of Srila Prabhupada, our Guru Parampara in this way, then Krishna's pleased. He preserves what we have and carries what we lack. He cleanses our heart. And when our heart is clean, then Krishna's pleased to reveal himself to us within our heart.